Welcome to the Writer's Den. My name is Jane Waters Thomas. Today we have a very special guest with us who has been serving our community for over 20 years and our furry family, veterinary Dr. Mitzi Vargas. Welcome. Thank you, Jane, for having me on the show. Well, today we're actually going to talk about author Dr. Mitzi Vargas. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and you've had a couple of books, The Soul of Success, and, um, and now we're actually going to talk a little bit more about your brand new book, which is The Alt Vet, and a holistic approach to caring for our babies and our, and our furry family. What, yeah. what kind of inspired you to take a look at alternative medicine for animals? My own pets. Uh, so most of my knowledge is experiential in that book. So it's really a lot of anecdotes and uh, cases and feelings about my cases. So it's a look back on my practice the past seven years really, um, when I have been doing the integrative medicine. Mm -hmm. So my dogs, I used to have German Shepherds, everybody knows, uh, you know, I take care of the Winter Haven Police Department Shepherds, I am a Shepherd aficionado. <laughs> totally biased for the breed, right? <laughs> so, um, Having the shepherds, they have certain characteristics. One of them is that they have a lot of problems with the joints. Mm -hmm. As they age, they don't age uh, like Jane Fonda. They age a little bit rough. So, um, so ex you know, exhausting all the alternatives that I had, all the um, steroids or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, all the pharmaceuticals that I had at my disposition, it wasn't even enough. So because of that and my love for my own pets, trying to find a way to handle and manage their pain, which was chronic in nature, without killing them, you know, without right. without cutting short their lives and the time with me. That's when I started searching and looking into holistic medicine, looking into acupuncture. So my first foray was in acupuncture. And then of course, you know, once you get a little bit of knowledge, then you I get really thirsty for knowledge, and I started dwelling into um, food therapy. And then after that came uh, Twina, which is medical massage by the Chinese medicine. And then after, the last one was herbology, which certainly was a really difficult topic. And um, it took me a couple of years to finish that certification. But now I'm considered a certified TCVM practitioner, which mm -hmm. is you know, all the uh, modalities of uh, Chinese mm -hmm. medicine, and uh, I love it. You know, our, our viewers can certainly, they can, and we're going to give them the information they need at the, at the end of this show today to, to find you and know about the number of awards you've received, your certifications, and, um, and, and just how much research and work and love has gone into all that you do for the animals that you care for, your own and everybody else's, um, in, in certainly Polk County and I think beyond at this point with the writing of this book. Um, one of the, one of the um, words, or I guess a phrase would be the better way to say this, is actually in the, t in the title of your book, in the subtitle, and it's about the longevity of life. Mm -hmm. and, and in whole practices, whether we're talking human, animal, spiritual, whatever the, the wholeness is, um, it is about longevity of life. Yeah, the quality and the longevity. So I really, uh, this book is a, is a recipe book. It has food recipes, it has um, actual techniques and showing how to do massage, how to do certain things that will prolong the life of your companions. <laughs> but not just uh, prolong it, but the quality of them. Mm -hmm. So again, um, I love my pets dearly. I know my pet owners that come to our practice and, and that are watching love their pets. And if we can squeeze uh, a year, two years, five years, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with them, who wouldn't even go for it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I was trying to give them the tools, you know, some of the tools, so at least they are aware of it. Some of them are actually things that they can do at home that won't harm their pet. And um, there's some resources at the end of the book where they can find, uh, they don't have to come to me, but they can at least go to sources that are reputable and that they can find um, where they can uh, get those services. So, Dr. Vargas, in, in the process of writing your book, and, you know, I, I think that writers make an effort to say, I want this to read in this fashion, and, and it's going to be linear because I need my reader to follow how to make this happen. You know, looking at some of the chapters like energetic field, acupuncture, emergency response, and, and how these lay out, what was your thought process in putting together this book for your readers? 
um, very perceptive, Jane, because there is a conscious evolution of the chapters. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the beginning starts with the energetic feel and uh, what is energy. And explaining these basic concepts are very necessary in the beginning so that the people understand why acupuncture works. Because there is a lot of people that are skeptical about it, but this is a valid modality used all over the world and it's been several millennia uh, since it was being used. So I, I think that the, the title says revolutionary, but it, it's really a revolutionary, it's not a new concept, it's just a new interpretation of it. Wonderful, and I want to just kind of touch on the the one uh, chapter six, I believe it is, emergency response. When I read the chapter title to that, I thought, oh, I have been in emergency response mode with my animals, um, and what do I do now? Tell me a little bit about that chapter and and what what you're trying to reach in that chapter in emergency re response. And it doesn't uh, is not meant to be a a substitute for adequate you know mm -hmm. veterinary care, but what it is is certain things that you can do uh, in a moment of emergency or crisis. And so there's certain acupuncture, acupuncture points that you can put pressure on uh, for to stop bleeding, to uh, revive an animal, to, um, to increase respiration on an animal, so that, to decrease the pain. So those points, uh, say for example, you have an animal that's having a seizure, there are very specific points that could ease or stop the seizure. And I will show you how to put pressure on those points, as somebody's calling the doctor or as you getting to uh, drive to the emergency clinic, at least you feel like you're doing something um, to benefit the outcome of that crisis. So the book is full of sort of those advice. Kind of tips and tricks. Yes. So another area that I just want to touch on, um, because you know we think about this stuff um, in our daily walk as humans, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we all do anyway, um, and that is exercise and mental stimulation and, and the importance of that for our animals. Can you touch on why you put this in the book? Um, and, and do you feel that um, pet owners are just thinking, man, my dog would be better if it went for a run or maybe went for a swim in Dr. Mar Vargas's pool or? <laughs> yeah. Well, and exercise is so important, not because the pets are vain and they want to look skinny or anything right. like that, but because it is a crucial part of their brain development. They need stimulation, a lot of stimulation. When the dogs go out, they're walking and exercising, but they're smelling. The olfactory part of their brain is gigantic. It's 10 times bigger than ours. Uh, and they're constantly processing new stimulation. When the cat has an opportunity to go outside or to watch uh, the outside from a lanai, safe lanai, they are stimulating their brain. Um, so basically exercise is, is seen here also as a bond. Um, so the dog, for example, looks at the master, the, the pet owner, as, as the alpha dog in the pack. And so visiting uh, a park or running with your dog serves a purpose of him following the alpha. It, it just fulfills that need of, of following the alpha, the pack. And uh, it's a really way, great way to have a, a deeper bond with your dog. And of course, for cat owners or exotics, they can do at home simple exercises to stimulate their brain and to exercise their pets. Um, because again, most of the, the time in the wild is spent foraging, looking for food, looking for new territories. Um, when you take that away from the pet and you make them couch potatoes, <laughs> um, not only are they gonna be fat and heavy, but they're gonna have a lot of behavioral problems and all of them could be avoided. Interesting. So in, the, in writing the book, was this book a lifelong dream, when, you know, that I want to write about a holistic medicine for animals? How did you come to this particular topic beyond your personal interest? Um, well, because uh, I, I am a certified veterinary journalist. I have a lot of interest in educating the public. It makes the job of a veterinarian so much easier if the owner knows and how to be a responsible pet owner and knows how to avoid certain things that could be fatal and could be so easily avoided. And so it makes my job easier. So I, I started writing pet care columns uh, years ago for the ledger and um, it, that just evolved, you know. I wanted to, to tell the world about this. Um, I can influence 
a certain amount of pet owners that come to my practice, but how can I, you know, spread that message wider? I'm sitting on all these exciting developments that are information, mm -hmm. and I would like to have, find a way to transmit it. So that that's really how the book was born. And so um, I think in this way, uh, it's not just a pet care guide, but it could save some life. Then if I can save one dog because somebody read something in there and were able to, to do something for that pet, then the, the purpose of the book is fulfilled. So you are, you are busy, you're a busy lady. Um, we know that you, you write for local um, media sources such as uh, The Ledger, which is our local press. Um, you write magazine articles. Um, you are constantly advising. Um, I see you on Facebook and social media. How do you fit all of this into your schedule? Because you know, as a writer, those that are dreaming of being published someday I, I hear it too often in, in small group settings where we're talking in writers' workshops and they're like, well, I just don't have time, I just can't make time. You've not only made time to write one complete book that is all yours, um, the new Alt-Vet book, um, you are a participant and writer on The Soul of Success, you write all of the time, and you're still practicing daily. Yes. Um, some people claim that I have a, a triple A personality <laughs> and, uh, instead of an A personality. And some have uh, you know, accused me of having adult onset of ADHD. I don't know. But um, I, I think it's important to me. And because it's important, I prioritize it. So I wake up every morning at 4.45 in the morning, get ready for the day, uh, get my kids ready to school. And from 6 to 7.30 or 7.45 is my quiet time for, to write. I write art articles, I do research for articles, and the past year, it took me about a year to write the book, and uh, you know, God willing, should be uh, released uh, late 2016 or early 2017, we're still, uh, publishers still kind of like finding the best time to really release the book. Um, but it's, it's come to a fruition, but it, it is a lot of time. And, and if you're a writer, it's something that you're passionate about. It's something that you really want to, to come to fruition, then, then put the effort on it, then make the time. There is never time. You just have to carve an, you know, some space during the day. Right. And, and sometimes I feel like earlier in the morning is best because then the, whatever the day brings is after you fulfill your duty as your writer and is to put it in writing and just a, a you know one hour one hour and a half in the morning that's all it takes and some days are days that you're not inspired you're tired and grumpy <laughs> and you just have some coffee then do research you know do the research to lay mm -hmm. out so when you are inspired then you sit down and just write well, and, and you are inspiring to, to read some of the materials, and you know, and I read the articles in the paper every time, and I catch you in different magazines that are local publications from time to time. But I was really excited um, to hear about the new book. Um, whole living in general is, is not a new concept, and, and to bring that philosophy to pet care, I just think is just brilliant. And um, so my question is, um, really, within the, the veterinary field and within pet care, how, how common is this becoming? How common is the holistic approach, in your opinion? Um, are we going to find this everywhere? You know, I haven't seen it everywhere, so. <laughs> no, it, it's in incipient stages right now. Um, again, these concepts are two millennia or more, uh, you know, old. However, it's taken the time to come in, a lot of resistance from, you know, I would say big pharma and some of the scientific establishment. But as uh, a lot of uh, viewers might be surprised, there's over 20,000 scientific studies published about acupuncture and the benefits worldwide. So, I mean, it, it is mounting. As the evidence mounts, you can and the truth is out that this works, mm -hmm. that this approach to living actually can enlarge the, the, you know, the longevity, the days on earth for your pet and, and the time that you share with your pet and the quality of that time, the evidence is mounting. You can hide the truth. So more people are actually wanting it. Mm -hmm. There's about 5,000 graduates from the Chi Institute where I teach and where I graduated from 
worldwide. And in the United States, that's less than 1% of all the vets available, but it's just growing. It's starting to grow. And, and Polk County um, might not be in the forefront of a lot of things, but we have several people that have gone to the Chi Institute in Polk County, and they they may not be doing it as, to the degree that I'm doing it. Um, I just, um, like they say, I drank the Kool-Aid and I'm, I, just, <laughs> I just got so much success doing it. I'm just so excited about it and passionate about it that I just can't just, you know, sit still and without, you know, trying to get the word out. But there are several people in Polk County and the surrounding areas that are practicing integrated medicine or at least uh, know have taken the courses in acupuncture mm -hmm. and are at least open-minded enough to incorporate it or offer it to their pet uh, owners. So of the clients that you see that come into your office, are they given an, an, an option like there's this alternative which is acupuncture or we can give them medication or we can do mental stimulation and exercise or we can do surgery or how do you approach that um, from the pet owners standpoint when they come in and they're worried about their animal and maybe that that modality that you're you're offering to them is just beyond their concept how do you approach that pet owner and that's why the book's so important because it wouldn't be so nice if they read the book and then they just <laughs> come prepare because basically I go through all those chapters you know they on a daily basis sometimes when they first come in there because if I see that a modality is better for your pet I will do it so basically it's not all black and white it's not all oh I'm just going to do holistic medicine and that's it it's mm -hmm. integrated it means that yes I probably will do the surgery or I probably if it's appropriate uh, and your pet is healthy enough but if your pet is 14 and a half years old has cancer has other problems then a surgery may not be the option maybe palliative care using um, certain medications diet and um, and some acupuncture will help better that you know that that pet. So I mean, it depends on the case. It's case by case, and that is the case of integrative medicine. It's not cookie cutter medicine. Dogs are not cookies, so it makes sense, right? Right. So right. It, it's case by case, uh, one by one, and it takes time. And that's probably Jane going back to your uh, last question. That might be why it's not so widely accepted by veterinarians, mm -hmm. but because we're we're asking a lot of the practitioners. Okay, now educate. Now sit down and explain. Mm -hmm. Now um, talk about food. Talk about home cooking for your pet. Talk about massaging daily. So that's adding time. And in this day and age of HMO, you know, come in, come out. And uh, it's best to get one, one treatment for all pets that come out showing up lame. There's one treatment. Well, in my practice and in practice of any integrative practitioner, it's not that way. It's your dog. What personality is your dog? Uh, what's the environment? What are they eating? You know, those are the things that we go through day to day. So it would be so nice <laughs> if people will actually buy the book and read mm -hmm. it, and then they they'll get the concept down, and it will be they will be more open-minded to that approach. But again, it's just a tool in the toolbox to take care of your mm -hmm. pet. So it's not all or nothing. It's just well, integrated. you know, even in even in whole practices such as whole wellness practices, I should say, um, such as in exercise, and I'll just use that as an example. Um, really, the education process to getting started is the hardest part, and then your awareness is so much different. Do you find that to be the case with with pet owners as well? Um, meaning that you know, acupuncture was the plan, and now you've made them aware of how it helps some of the, the, the body structure of the animal, where those points are, how those points affect that animal. And now the next time you hear from them, you're like, oh, you know, maybe they're, you know, we didn't even have to come in because I caught it early on. And do you, do you see that happening or do you feel that that's going to happen more? That I see it every day. I have plenty of examples in the book that is full of stories like that. And I hope that after the book is out and people read it, that I even see more of that. But for example, in the beginning, when I, you know, seven years ago when I started in this journey, I couldn't approach, I didn't know how to approach people. Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that your pet sh could benefit from acupuncture. So I started doing that. 
at the end of live appointments when people would come and say, you know, I think is it time to be to put to sleep? And I would say, well, you've tried everything. How about we try acupuncture? And Jane, you'll be surprised. Over five years later from that appointment, we celebrated birthdays. Wow. Uh, on those pets. That's wonderful. And, it, and, and if it was one pet, but it's so many of them, dozens and dozens of cases, mm -hmm. because those were my original cases, yes. and they would try acupuncture, and we had dramatic results with certain, you know, cases, mm -hmm. and with some of them were not so dramatic, um, but they were quantifiable, and they, and they were undeniable by the owner, which were skepticals. They didn't know what Dr. Vargas is coming up with, this <laughs> new thing, new age uh, guru thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't that. It was just, okay, I, if you're sure of your decision, that's mm -hmm. okay. But if you're not sure and you want to try something else, try acupuncture. So that progressed from end of life appointments to new puppies. When the new puppies come in, we dedicate a lot of time about food. Food is so important for yes. us and for the pets, for the wellness, for the rest of their life. And and I think putting the time when they're puppies, it's just so wonderful. In these seven years, all the new puppies that I started talking about that, how well they develop how great they're doing, how healthy they are. And I don't see them that often, uh, but that, I'm okay with that. Right, right. That's <laughs> I'm okay with seeing pets that are healthy. <laughs> I yes. don't need to see all the sick ones all the time. That's right. So. Well, and I just think that, that pet owners feel just helpless sometimes. Just, I just don't know what to do with this. And, and I think that that's the thing I get from the new, the new book, AltVet, um, is that there's some real answers in it. These are some things you can look for. This is what you could do. You need to be start thinking about food choices for your animals. You know, I know I have a 14-year-old Maltese who I'm hoping is with me forever, but the likeliness of that is not. And as she gets older, crazy things happen. We've had to change her diet twice, you know, and I really had to do some research um, to try and figure out, you know, okay, I just need to boil chicken and do rice and make it really soft and you know but you just feel so helpless when that little furry baby's there and their eyes are so big and you're like ah oh, what do i do and i just think that this book is just the perfect perfect answer for those pet owners who know they know nothing yeah. they know that they know nothing about this one thing um, and it's with something that they love um, as a child i mean many pet owners you know my mother is a, the perfect example of this and many seniors where their animals are their life. Their life, she loves them. If something happens, the whole family has to stop and we have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, so I am excited about your new book, Alt Vet, um, The Revolutionary Pet Care and Longe Longevity Solution. Um, and then also The Soul of Success, and I'm not focusing on that one, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that one, but I really am very excited about Alt Vet and, and what that stands to do for pet owners, not only in Polk County, but worldwide. Yes, I, you know, that's my wish that I, like I said, the, the purpose of the book is to promote awareness, to teach TCVM, introduce TCVM to pet owners, not only in Polk County, but everywhere. And, and to hope that people will open their minds and, you know, they love their pets, just give it a try. And like I said, we're not asking anybody to forget what works. It's right. just in addition to, it's just you know, you add to the question, you don't subtract anything. Now, Dr. Vargas, I know that you frequently speak and, and do some other things. If somebody wanted to have you come out and speak to their organization, um, how would they contact you? Well, uh, motivational media suggested that I put an uh, author's website, so uh, they can find me at uh, www.mitzivargas.com, and that's where we're going to have our landing page for pre-orders, and we're going to have all the information of events that we're going to be um, having. Um, the book tour starts um, about a month before the book is released, so I will keep you updated with that, too. Wonderful. And, uh, but I'm just so excited. Um, you know, to share it. Um, people know me in Polk County. They know that I own Orchid Springs Animal Hospital in Winter Haven, and they can either go to the hospital website or uh, call us, and I'll be so happy to spend um, some time explaining or, or encouraging or just giving advice. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Mitzi Vargas, for coming today and talking to us about your brand new book, The Alt Vet. And um, we look forward to seeing that in publication very soon. Thank you so much, Jane. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us at the Writer's Den. We will see you next time. Yay.